Hey there, and welcome to the Herbal Moon Goddess podcast. My name's Kyra, and today I'm going to be sharing with you all about the solstices, the Sabbaths, and how I celebrate these seasonal uh, celebrations with my family. I'm going to be covering uh, why I cancelled Christmas for my kids and what we do instead, as well as some of the differences between the Sabbaths in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere and what that means for us down here in Australia, as well as uh, all you guys who are in the Northern Hemisphere. I know that a lot of you who are listening are like from the US and the UK, Germany and other places up in the northern part of the world. So don't worry, everything I'm going to be talking about here today is going to be relevant for you as well. So let's start off by explaining what exactly are the Sabbaths? What are the solstices? What, what are all these terms I'm talking about? So let's start off with like a bit of a glossary. <laughs> so the solstices, there are two solstices per year. We have the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. And the winter solstice, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's when the sun moves in to Cancer. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then your shortest day of the year is the day when the sun moves in to Capricorn. So as you can see, uh, depending on which hemisphere you're in, obviously it's gonna be different. So that's roughly about the 21st of June for the winter solstice in Australia or the 21st of December in the Northern Hemisphere. And then of course we've got the summer solstice which is the longest day of the year. So for us here in the southern hemisphere it occurs when the sun moves into Capricorn which is around the 21st of December. If you're in the northern hemisphere then it's around the 21st of June which is when the sun moves into Cancer. That will be your longest day of the year, the summer solstice. So that's what the solstices are. Now, before I move into what Sabbaths are, let's talk a little bit about equinoxes. So equinoxes are when the sun is, uh, like when there's equal day, equal night. So we're pretty much halfway between the winter solstice and the summer solstice or vice versa. So we have two equinoxes. We have one in spring and one in autumn or fall. So, so far we've got two solstices and two equinoxes. So let's talk about Sabbaths. So <laughs> Sabbaths are pretty much pagan celebrations that follow the wheel of the year. So we have eight Sabbaths in, uh, you know, the wheel of the year, which is, which spans, you know, the whole year. So as you may be guessing already, the Sabbaths fall on the two solstices as well as the two equinoxes that we've just talked about. And we also celebrate uh, four other Sabbaths on cross quarter days, which are, uh, yeah, between that time, between the solstice and the equinox or between the equinox and the solstice. So we've got eight different Sabbaths and we'll talk a bit about that, uh, well, I guess now. <laughs> so the Sabbaths, what really drew me in to learning more about like Southern Hemisphere, witchcraft and paganism was discovering the Sabbaths. Uh, a few years ago, I don't know exactly what happened. I, I just remember learning about the Sabbaths. And at the same time, I, like, you know, I was starting to get really into like the Sabbaths and what that meant. And then I realized, well, hang on, it's kind of different to like, you know, what I'm learning about. Like, I think I was learning about Yule and, uh, you know, it just didn't really make sense because for me down here in Australia, it was summer and it just wasn't seasonally appropriate. So I began to look into it a bit more. And of course, there's a lot of other Aussie witches and pagans and, uh, you know, we, we kind of reverse our, our Sabbaths so that when the Northern Hemisphere is celebrating Yule, we're celebrating Litha and uh, so forth. So that's what really drew me into Sabbaths because I wanted to kind of, 
aligned with the energy of nature and the Sabbaths are seasonal celebrations. Each Sabbath is really about appreciating uh, you know, what's growing in your garden right now, the different animals that are out, the native flowers, all those things that are happening in nature. Maybe it's snowing or maybe it's like really scorching hot in the middle of summer. The Sabbaths really helped me find more appreciation and gratitude for what was happening seasonally at the time and to make like, you know, a little altar or do some little rituals or activities that helped me to connect with what was going on with the season. So let's talk about those different Sabbaths and when they approximately occur. So the wheel of the year kind of starts on Yule, which is the winter solstice. So the winter solstice, as I've already just discussed, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, that's roughly the 21st of June. Or if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, the uh, winter solstice or Yule is around the 21st of December. Now, the dates can fluctuate a little uh, depending on, you know, the exact time or day that the sun moves or whatever. So I'm just giving you a rough estimate. The, the dates I'm providing are more of the traditional dates. If you'd like to be a bit more exact, you can find out the exact date that uh, the Sabbaths are falling on. So Yule is the first of the Sabbaths and Yule is a celebration of winter. And it's pretty much like Christmas where, uh, you know, we, we give to others, we are generous, we share, we, we pretty much get together with our family and have a joyful, cozy time. So then approximately six weeks after Yule, we have Imbolc. Imbolc is also known as Candlemas, and that occurs uh, for us here in the Southern Hemisphere around the 1st of August. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then Imbolc occurs around the 1st of February. So Imbolc is a celebration uh, involving fire and the uh, 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 goddess Bridget. Uh, she is, uh, she's got a, a Celtic background if you'd like to look at more into the history of Imbolc. Uh, but it's pretty much like a celebration of the ending of winter and we're starting to bring in some more light. This is why we light fires and why we light candles to kind of usher in the spring weather to end winter and bring in more warmth. So that's why we light candles at Imbolc. So then approximately Six weeks after Imbolc, we celebrate Ostara, which as the name kind of implies, it's a bit like Easter. So for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, Ostara is celebrated on the spring equinox, which is on or around the 21st of September. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then that occurs for you around the 21st of March, which of course is also the spring equinox. So of course, this is a spring celebration and you know, it's, it's a lot like Easter. So if you think about the things that you probably already know are associated, associated with Easter, uh, that's the sort of stuff that's associated with Ostara. So eggs, fertility, baby animals, flowers. Uh, this is a time when, you know, we start to see flowers blooming in the garden and we may be getting like our first harvest of the very first spring veggies that are growing. So this is a really nice time to go out and pick flowers or harvest those spring crops and bring them into the house to celebrate this season of growth and fertility. About six weeks after Ostara, we celebrate Beltane. So for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, Beltane falls around the 31st of October. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then Beltane is around the 30th of May. I mean, no, the, <laughs> the 30th of April, the 30th of April, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I can't count. <laughs> so uh, in, Beltane. Beltane is really like a celebration of 
unity and love. It is the union of the God and Goddess. So this is like really a time when fertility rights are performed. This is the time of year when, uh, you know, pretty much mating rituals occur, not just with humans, but with animals. It's often breeding season uh, for the animals around you uh, in nature. And so this is uh, a time where historically, you know, humans will be making babies as well. So really that's the underlying theme of Beltane. Now, if you're celebrating this with families, uh, like as I do celebrate Beltane with my family, I just focus on the spring elements and like being really loving and kind to everyone in our lives, like teaching, teaching my kids to be more compassionate towards each other. Uh, is how I kind of tone down the more sexual orientated themes of this Sabbath. So about six weeks after Beltane, we celebrate the summer solstice, which is Letha. So if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then this occurs around the 21st of December. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then Letha occurs around the 21st of June. So Letha is the summer harvest celebration. This is when, uh, you know, we really uh, have like lots of bountiful harvests that uh, maybe we're growing in our garden or maybe that we're receiving in through our lives in different ways. It may not just be about food, by the way, like you may be receiving a lot of other stuff in your life during the summer solstice. So this is a really beautiful time for gratitude rituals, being grateful for the things that are in your life because Gratitude really helps the universe know what to keep sending to you. So gratitude plays a big part in uh, like what I do for Letha. Moving on uh, to the next Sabbath, we have Lamas, which is about six weeks after the summer solstice. So for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, that occurs around the 1st of February. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then that occurs around the 1st of August. And Lamas is uh, like another sort of the summer harvest uh, celebration. It's more like the second summer harvest. Uh, this is a time where maybe we're harvesting corn or wheat or well, maybe if you, <laughs> in the olden days, that could have been what you were harvesting. Maybe you're not harvesting that now. But those are the sorts of things uh, that are associated with Lamas. So this is a really nice time to bake bread or do some other sort of baking in your kitchen. Like get your kitchen witch on, go into the kitchen and create stuff with the things that you've been harvesting <laughs> in your life. And then six weeks after Lamas, we have Marbon, which is uh, the fall or autumn equinox Sabbath. And Mabon is a beautiful, uh, like, yeah, autumn celebration. You think about all the things that you associate with autumn or fall. So, you know, crunchy leaves, pine cones, acorns, uh, and like those late blooming flowers or crops, mushrooms, foraging, going out into nature and seeing what you can forage is something that's really fun to do with Mabon. So uh, Mabon falls uh, in the Southern Hemisphere, that's the 21st of March. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then that's around the 21st of September. And then the last of the Sabbaths, the Wheel of the Year ends with Sowain, uh, which is pretty much like Halloween. So in the Southern Hemisphere, we celebrate Sowain around the 30th of April. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then that falls around the 31st of October, which coincidentally is Halloween. So this is a beautiful time where we let go of the past year so that we can start afresh with the new year. So Ween is also a time where uh, the veil is considered to be quite thin between worlds. So communication with your spirit guides or your ancestors can be something that is quite appropriate to do during that So energy. Uh, my kids 
<laughs> they they like the idea of uh you know being able to talk to ghosts but then they kind of get freaked out they're like oh wait a ghost real and it's like oh it's okay don't worry so <laughs> up to you about how you kind of approach that with your children whether you just want to focus on like letting go maybe doing a declutter of your house or whatever or maybe uh you know going a bit witchy into the divination and contacting the spirits and that sort of thing so that's pretty much the wheel of the year and uh yeah the southern hemisphere versus the northern hemisphere so i know i talked about uh that I'd share about why I don't celebrate Christmas with my family anymore, why I canceled Christmas for my kids. So yeah, this kind of, uh, I didn't really see this coming when I decided to do this. I, I felt really disconnected from Christmas for a while. And like here in the Southern hemisphere, well, especially here in Australia, things are really Americanized. Like you go to the shops and like, you know, there's Christmas stuff available, like from October pretty much. And, you know, it's all like snowmen and reindeers and, you know, it's, it's not very seasonally appropriate. And it really got me thinking, especially as I started learning more about the Sabbaths and, you know, that celebrating with the seasons I kind of began to yeah disconnect myself from Christmas so last year I I was like right guys we're not celebrating Christmas this year because like we don't do Santa I've been very honest with my kids uh, <laughs> forever and I never really pretended that Santa was real I feel like you know I, I don't like lying to my kids. Um, so that was my personal choice to not do Santa. So that kind of made the transition from not celebrating Christmas a bit easier. So we now celebrate the summer solstice instead of Christmas, which as I've just discussed here in the Southern hemisphere, Litha falls around four days before Christmas anyway. So we just have like a week long celebration. So yeah, last year we did this for the first time where we didn't really celebrate Christmas. We just celebrated the summer solstice. Uh, we typically our Christmas celebrations, we just like kind of hang out at home with just me and my little family. Uh, we don't really see extended family anyway. So it hasn't really made a huge difference. Uh, to a lot of things. It's just that we're celebrating a little bit earlier and there's less presence. There's less commercialism. It's, it's really, uh, I feel like Christmas can be a huge money sucker when you're just buying stuff for the sake of buying it. And so switching to this more solstice sort of based celebration has really helped me reduce that consumerism element. I'm not going out there and just buying Christmas stuff because it's Christmas. Uh, yeah, you know, we're going out into nature and we're utilizing the things that are in our garden or in our local area for decorating our home and using those as part of our solstice celebration. So yes, we do do presents on Litha. I'm not a total killjoy. I haven't like <laughs> totally stolen Christmas. We still do presents. We still do presents with our Christmas celebrating extended family as well. Like we still do presents with them. We send them Christmas cards, whatever. But for us, Christmas day is uh, pretty much just held on the <laughs> summer solstice and we just do things a little bit differently. Uh, so that's pretty much how uh, I transitioned my family from celebrating uh, like, I guess, you know, all the civilized <laughs> uh, celebrations. Like we don't even celebrate Easter anymore. Um, we, we've really transitioned to just celebrating those eight Sabbaths and really living in tune with those natural cycles. So this has been really fun uh, to do this with my kids. So if you don't already know, I do have four kids. I've got a 12 year old, nine year old, seven year old and four year old. We homeschool as well. 
Uh, so we do things differently anyway. So celebrating the Sabbaths was just, it was just a no brainer once, you know, kind of just all clicked in my head. It was just like, well, yeah, of course we can do this. So uh, we had a really fun time celebrating Beltane together a few weeks back when it, when it was Beltane here in the Southern Hemisphere. And for us, like, you know, we made it really kid friendly. We did a dress up thing, like, you know, like a Halloween sort of dress up <laughs> party just with our little family. We made a bit of a feast, uh, like, and it was just fun. Like, you know, we went out and picked flowers as a family and decorated the house a bit. And that's pretty much what we do for each of the solstices or uh, the Sabbaths uh, with the kids. It's all about going out into nature and just acknowledging this time of the year and celebrating that, you know, this is, this is what life is all about rather than, you know, thinking like Christmas is this winter wonderland where here in Australia, it is definitely not. So uh, moving on to a bit more about the summer solstice and Litha, uh, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you're celebrating Yule, I feel like Yule is a lot like Christmas. Uh, so, you know, it wouldn't be that hard if you're interested in maybe not celebrating Christmas anymore and just celebrating the Sabbaths. Like that's a really easy transition to make. For us here in the Southern Hemisphere, we actually, uh, we celebrate Yule, uh, you know, in the middle of the year when it's the uh, winter solstice around the 21st of June. And so we actually set up the Christmas tree and everything in June. So that's kind of weird, like when we have people over and they don't really know us <laughs> that well and they're kind of like, oh, why have you got the Christmas tree up? And it's like, well, we're celebrating Christmas. This is when we celebrate Christmas. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been really, it's been such an interesting journey transitioning from like Easter and Christmas and just doing the Sabbaths. But for me, it's, and, and my family, I feel like, you know, we now have all these other holidays to celebrate. Like every six weeks, it's like, there's a new Sabbath to celebrate. So like, I don't feel like my kids are missing out. They don't feel like they're missing out. Uh, like, you know, they still get presents and everything. So they don't really care. So before I leave you, I'm just going to share with you a bit more about the summer solstice and what we do to celebrate the summer solstice. Because at the time that uh, you're probably listening to this, it would be around the summer solstice. If you're listening to this when I'm releasing this podcast in December. So the summer solstice, this is actually one of my favorites because, well, of course, you know, it happens around Christmas time, uh, but the summer solstice, like it's just that time of year where, you know, you just feel like it's the peak of the year where you've been working so hard for the past six months since, you know, Yule, since the start of the pagan year, you've been working towards your goals. And when the summer solstice rolls around, like you are really seeing the completion of all those energies and it's an opportunity to kind of have a break, have a rest as you switch your focus towards winding down into the next six months as the days begin to get a bit shorter. So the summer solstice, some ways that I celebrate this with my family is that we go out into nature. Sometimes we might uh, go camping around uh, the different Sabbaths as well. Camping on the summer solstice is really fun and that's what we're hoping to do this year for our solstice celebration. Other things that you can do are like evening gratitude rituals with the family. Like if you're sitting around having dinner, then sharing what you're all grateful for. Like even if it's just one thing, you just go around the table and everyone says one thing that they're grateful for. It's a really beautiful way to add a bit more mindfulness to this seasonal Sabbath. The summer solstice is also a really fun time to, you know, have a bonfire or stay up really late. My kids just love that. They, <laughs> that's probably their favorite part is being able to stay up a bit later on the solstice. Uh, yeah, my boys would stay up all night if I let them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And really 
I guess the main thing to remember about solstices is just get out into nature. You don't need to follow any hard and fast rules when celebrating the Sabbaths. It's all about connecting with nature and utilizing what's already available to you in your local area. So going out into your garden, if you've got an abundance of whatever growing out there, then, you know, that's use that in part of your solstice ritual or your or the specific Sabbath that you're celebrating. So keep turning to nature for inspiration as you're moving through the will of the year and celebrating the Sabbaths. So I hope that this episode has inspired you uh, to celebrate the Sabbaths uh, in different ways that maybe you can celebrate with your kids, as well as maybe prompting that idea of switching away from like the commercialism of Christmas and Easter and focusing on the seasonal Sabbaths instead. So if this episode really resonated with you, uh, if it struck a chord or if you're like, whoa, you canceled Christmas, whatever, if you'd like to start a conversation with me, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram at Herbal Moon Goddess. And if you like this episode, feel free to subscribe so that you can keep tuning in to more episodes of the Herbal Moon Goddess podcast. All right. I will catch you all on the next episode of the Herbal Moon Goddess podcast. Have a blessed solstice wherever you are in the world. And yeah, bye for now.